Jamal Nayaz with one of the greatest fighters to ever grace a boxing ring, Roy Jones. You're back in there with Chris Eubank Jr. How great does it feel to be back aligned with him and what do you make of this matchup? It's one of the, the biggest British matchups in, in recent memory. Oh, it feels great, you know what I mean? I always like teaching Chris and the reason I like teaching Chris is because there's not a lot of fighters that I teach that really can catch what I teach. Chris, uh, Kevin Newman, Michael Williams Jr., Zach, I mean, uh, Tony Curtis, a few of them that can catch it, Andrew Murphy, a few that can get it, but most of them can't really catch it, you know what I mean? So, to have a guy that can catch it and can go do it, they can catch it, but they haven't proven that they can go do it. Chris has proven that he can catch it and go do it, and that's the biggest step. So, you love to have a person that can catch what you teach them and they can also go out there and utilize it right in your face. I mean, the UK crowd is notoriously loud and raucous compared to that of America. Was this a man like the the manic crowd that we've got here? Is this a, a crowd that you'd have thrived in in your heyday? You'd have loved to fight in front of the the, the raucous British fans here in Manchester. Had I known what I know now, I would have moved here in my heyday. Really? What the hell, fans that love boxing like this? Yeah. This is what I perform for. This is what I live for. You feel me? To see this many people show up and turn out and, and support boxing, man, I would have been here a long time ago. Had I known that, I just didn't know. Because you'd have thrived under that, the pressure, the spotlight, the crowd, it's unbelievable, isn't it? Man, it's completely unbelievable. You feel me? I, I hate, I ain't in my mid-40s, I still come back over and do it, but you know, it's too late now. But yeah, man, this crowd, this crowd is what I live for, and this is what I like about Chris. This crowd brings him up a notch, because he loves to be under pressure, he loves to be under the lights. He loves to perform for the people, and that's what I like about it. He came through a highly publicized fight between him and Conor Ben that never came to be and we all know why that didn't come to be. What was that experience like from your end seeing that happen and how did it affect Chris afterwards? Well the best thing about it is to see Chris be able to take that and change it right over, change gears, turn right over to this new page because for me he got a lot of good publicity out of it. He was no longer really the bad guy now because Conor became the bad guy. So for the first time Chris got the chance to be looked upon as a good guy. And I think he embraced that. And because he embraced it, he went right back in the gym, got right back ready, and he's ready to fight Liam. Had that not happened that way, I think he'd be in a bad situation right now because it's hard to go from a highly publicized fight with a fighter that may not be quite where you, he should be, in your opinion, to fighting a little bit lower publicized, but a guy who's much higher than that. And you know that, you understand me? So in my opinion right now, Liam is much more dangerous then Connor, with the exception of having one shot knockout power, Connor got bigger one shot knockout power probably than even Liam has. But Liam is a much more smart, savage, savvier challenger than Connor being. So it's a bigger publicity fight with Connor, but a much bigger boxing tactical fight with Liam. Do you enjoy watching Chris Eubank try to dissect his opponents before the fight with the mind game? So that's what his father did. Um, obviously, everyone knows what to expect when they're going to go into the ring with, with Chris Eubank Jr. There's going to be a lot of trash talking beforehand. Even if he doesn't think he's trash talking him, he is. Well, the, the funny part about it is I love the way that he does it because, see, there's levels to everything. To have a guy to be classy about the way he gets under other guys' skin, I've never seen anybody besides his father as good as him and he's so good at just classfully taking guys mind and doing what he wants to do with it i have to mention as well it was amazing to see you back in there with mike tyson a couple of years ago just what was that experience like against one of the all-time legends just like yourself that was a, a dream match for the fans for, like myself couldn't believe he was still so strong couldn't believe he was still so fast couldn't believe he was still so hard to hit so it was a very beautiful night a beautiful event i really enjoyed it I really did it for the fans because we was in a pandemic at the time. Everybody was kind of locked in. Um, and it worked out beautiful for them. So I, that was one from my heart to the fans. Would you ever step back in there for an exhibition bout again? It'd be very tough, man. You know, it's like I did out for the fans. Now I think the fans would owe me one. So unless it was big money, why do it? You know. Final one as well. I know. It had been mentioned that there was potentially something on the table with Anthony Joshua, but that's not happening now. Where do you see his career going after this? Obviously, it looks like he's going to have a fight to sort of build back his confidence and get him back up there at the top of the game. How do you see him doing? That was smart because that's what I was thinking about doing, you know? Um, trying to get him back, a uh, get-back fight first, then get him back on the road. So I think he's going to be okay. Great. I really appreciate your time, man.